Hey guys, welcome back to Coding Flamingo. In this video, we're going to look at how we can run stored procedures on a recurrent basis in a database in Azure. So sometimes I've heard people that say that they don't want to move to SQL Azure or like any other cloud-based uh, SQL system because they usually run tasks in a task scheduler in the Windows machine inside the SQL server to run storage procedures or to run other tasks. So in this uh, video we're going to look at logic apps which will let us, so I created a storage procedure as you can see here that will just create a test table and it will add a row to the table. So we're, and it will let us run that in every so often without having to manage a full task scheduler machine that like you have to patch and you have to keep secure and you have to do all that stuff. So first, let's try it out, just make sure it works. So I'm just going to execute it. And so if we do here, we can see that like there was a table created and that it created the row. So now we're going to drop the table because if not, the storage procedure is going to fail. So now if we refresh, there is no tables. So now let's go back into Azure. And we're going to create um, logic app. So first we're going to go to add. You can name it whatever. And we're just going to use our SQL tutorial. Now we're going to put it in the same location as our database. And in this one, we're going to turn off log analytics, but like you want to get logs of the events to set up alerts if the event fails and stuff, you want to set that up. Um, I'm just going to fast forward until the, oh, the deployment is done before I could fast forward. So in Logic Apps, we can do many triggers. So it could be when a service, uh, when a message is received in service bus, I'm actually going to cover this in another video for uh, sending emails, so make sure to subscribe. Uh, when someone tweets something, you can trigger something. Uh, there's many triggers. So in this one, we're just going to start with recurrence. So we want it to run it once, once a day. And you can make it like at these hours. Um, in this one, we don't really care. Uh, so we're going to use a SQL Server. So in here, as you can see, there's many things you can do. So like if we go all, like you can do from like getting rows in different databases to adding stuff to queues, to create jobs in automation, to run an Azure function so you can run your own code. Uh, you can make it that it cancels a data factory. Um, use a new build so like you can do many things and so this is a really good way to um, to automate a lot of stuff you can also do multiple steps so like you can do it but I in this one we're just gonna do one step but you can keep adding so like once this happens do this and then do that um, so in this case we're gonna use SQL one so let me just search it So in this one, we want to execute a stored procedure where we could do a query and then use that data. We can do many things. So in here, uh, it doesn't show me the server name for some reason, so I always have to enter it. But once you put the server, it uses your credentials and it's able to get the uh, database and you can find the procedure that we created. Uh, I had already created the connection, but if it was the first time, you would actually have to set up the credential with what you want to log in and stuff. And here's what I was talking, so you can add other steps, but in this case, we're just going to do this too. We're going to save it. Now we're going to go here. And we're going to run it. I'm just going to fast forward until it runs. So as you can see, the 
the um, run succeeded. So this one was auto triggered and then it uh, created it and tells you the output parameters and the status code. Um, so then if we go to here, we should be able to refresh and select. It worked. So as you can see, you can use this for many things. Um, so thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.